Hi everyone, today I thought I'd do a get ready with me and have a little bit of a chat. I am getting ready to film a lot of videos after this, so I figured I might as well put on my makeup and talk to you guys. So I'm probably not going to be naming every single product that I use, um, but they will all be mentioned in the description bar down below if you're looking for more information. So we've been back from vacation for, I guess it's about a week now, and we've of course just moved into this condo so we're still kind of like setting it up and getting everything ready um david just put up this glitter curtain yesterday for me something like that i'm glad to have that back i'm missing a bar on this side to pull the curtain taut but so far it's looking pretty good i'm happy to have something behind me that being said a lot of you people seem to really like the gray wall so that worked for the time being and maybe i can pull the curtain out every now and then and just use the gray wall for that as a background too it is now of course october and i am using all of my october themed stuff this is a little cat on a um, broom with a witch's hat on the other side i think i got this at yeah crate and barrel in the u.s probably two years ago october is absolutely my favorite month of the year i am so excited for halloween we always go all out with our costumes and this year we're doing um the Avengers, but not just the Avengers that you would see in a movie. We're doing as many Avengers as we can because our group is quite large. I think we've got seven people, something like that. So I'm going as Captain Marvel, which I'm sure anybody who reads the comics is aware of, but they haven't had a movie out yet, so no one's really going to know who I am. But uh, I'm going to wear her outfit. I've already purchased it. It showed up a few weeks ago, I think, actually before we went on vacation. And it fits, which I'm really happy about. Sometimes you never know when you're ordering stuff from China. But it looks really good, so I'm extra excited about that. David's going to be going as Iron Man. He's in the midst of making his costume right now. I usually build mine a little bit more than I did this year. But I have no idea how to make the suit that she wears. So I just decided, forget it. You're just going to buy it. So I bought mine and that was really easy, but David's got like a lot of work ahead of him making this Iron Man suit, that's for sure. And if you're not familiar with just how obsessed with uh, Halloween I am, last year we did X-Men. I'll put a picture here so you can see that. Before that, I think we did like Batman. And then the year before that we did Sailor Moon. Although, no, that's not true. Before that was Guardians of the Galaxy and then before that was Sailor Moon. So it's been quite a few years of doing like intense costumes and I love it so much. I'm going to be keeping my makeup pretty simple today because I'm going to be shooting a lot of videos and I have to ch change my shirt and change my lipstick to make it look like I'm shooting on different days just because it's more interesting visually for you guys. I know I feel the same way when I'm watching somebody else. So I'm going to be sticking with a lot of my Inglot shadows. These are some sample ones. I've got my palettes over here. I'm actually going to be filming a swatch video of all of my Inglot shadows after this. So you'll get to see these a little bit more in depth then. So we were gone for two and a half weeks on vacation. We went to Bali first and then Australia. Um, Bali is more in line with what David likes to do for vacation. He prefers more of a beach vacation, whereas I'm somebody who wants to keep constantly busy. So Australia was something that I was going to enjoy a little bit more than Bali. So we landed in Bali. It took us about whew, 26, 27 hours door to door. Like it was a long trek. We flew through China. Uh, we landed at Shanghai airport, I don't know, 14 hours after we left Toronto. And we had a three hour layover and I was really excited because I was like, ooh, I'm gonna get to sleep. No, we barely made it to our next flight having to clear customs and then security again. And we had to fill out a form so that we could have a visa for being in China just for the three hours that we were there. Um, that was a little bit stressful because we literally came roaring up to our second plane, like running and the people are like, come on, come on. And we're like, holy crap. I didn't think that three hours was not gonna be enough time to make it to our next flight. But uh, we made it, and then we landed in Bali at, oops, oh geez, it was late. 1 a.m., 2 a.m., several, like two days later almost, because we left on Thursday in Toronto and landed like 2 a.m. Saturday morning. Yeah, yeah, something like that. We were pretty pooped at the time, but we went to bed, I don't know, after ordering room service because we wanted some more food. Um, went to bed and then we actually woke up at seven o'clock, like just naturally woke up and then went about our day. So didn't experience any jet lag on the way there. And I'm not somebody who really believes in jet lag. I think as long as you get enough sleep at some point, jet lag doesn't really affect me personally, but I, I think it's bizarre when it affects people for such a long period of time. Um, anyway, so we went about our day and we were just fine afterwards. Uh, Bali is beautiful. 
We were staying on a resort. It's the Double Six uh, Luxury Hotel in Seminyak. And it's right on the beach, which is beautiful. But um, the pictures that you see of Bali are representational of Bali in the sense that they are beautiful, the country is beautiful. But what you don't necessarily see is that on the sides of all the streets, there is garbage everywhere. It's like a dumping zone for anything. So that was a little bit sad to see because the country is so beautiful, but most people just chuck their garbage on the side of the street. So you see a little bit of what Instagram wants to show you, but the reality is that it's a little bit different in person there. That being said, the people are so freaking nice, so helpful. Um, there's no transit system, so whenever you wanted to go anywhere, you'd have to get a taxi or hire a driver, which we did a few days, hire a driver. Um, and man, the roads are totally wild out there. They are not like anything in North America. Most people are on scooters and they go every which way in traffic. They are literally going everywhere. If you're in a car, you have scooters coming at you from all angles. Uh, we didn't rent a scooter and I would have been terrified to do so because the rules of the road don't really hold true. That being said, they have this interesting system of honking at you to let you know that they're there. It's not a rude honk, which is weird because every time I hear honking here, I'm like, oh, a jerk. But it's not a rude honk. They're just literally letting you know, hey, I'm here. Don't make a sudden swerve motion, which I thought was really neat. One of my favorite things that we did in Bali was go up to this um, treetop area and do some like zip lining. Um, it's high up in the mountains and it took us kind of a while to get there. Uh, it was only 75 kilometers away, but because the roads are so different, it took us about two hours to get there. And it's beautiful up there, but you also get like kind of like this Tomb Raider like experience of like climbing through the treetops and zip lining. I had a lot of fun. I love anything that's like physical and you know, kind of exhilarating like that. The other favorite thing that we did, and this is kind of what inspired the entire trip was to go visit the Hanging Gardens of Bali. And the pictures of this place are absolutely unreal. I had never seen anything like it before, and months ago when we were trying to figure out where to go on vacation this year, I'd seen these pictures and I was like, can we go there? Now, that place is super expensive, and we didn't stay there overnight because it's, it's pricey. So we went for like a spa package um, that let us get a massage and go into the pool and that pool is just breathtaking. It's high up in the mountains, it faces over like a valley, and there's just like trees everywhere. It's one of those infinity pools, so the water comes right up to the edge and then just drops off. Man, that, that was, that's a once in a lifetime experience. That was absolutely beautiful. So we spent about a week in Bali. Um, we were, again, staying in the Seminyak area, which is pretty popular for tourists, I feel like. There was a lot of people in that area. And we walked around a decent amount, but it's not, it's not a place that's very conducive to tourist walking. Like if you go off the wrong street, you're basically in the road walking on it when cars are trying to pass around you, uh, which I made the mistake of doing like our first day there, something like that. But we found the main roads after that. And then after we'd spent about a week in Bali, we flew over to Sydney. Uh, whew, that was an experience. Um, I didn't realize that you needed a visa to get into Australia. We were in Denpasar Airport um, checking our luggage to get on the flight to Sydney. And the woman goes to me, can I see your visa for uh, Australia? And I go, no, we're Canadian. We don't need it. Jerk, right? Uh, she's like, no, unless you're from New Zealand, you need a visa. And I'm, I'm starting to panic at this point because literally our flight is taking off in two hours. And we don't have any visas. So thankfully the panic subsided pretty quickly, but they took us aside and had to start dealing with like Air Canada to get us uh, our visas into Australia. But I mean, for about 20 minutes, it was really touch and go on whether or not we'd even be able to go on the rest of this vacation. So after that debacle, we got our visas. Um, thank you, Garuda in Indonesia Airlines. You helped us out so much. They dealt with all of it. And uh, we landed in Australia at around, I don't know, 6 a.m. It was an overnight flight. And we checked into our Airbnb from there, uh, which was so easy to do, by the way. I mean, Airbnb in general is very easy, but the commute from the airport in Sydney to our hotel, uh, to our Airbnb was so, so easy. Their metro system 
is jaw-droppingly good. And I come back here and I'm like, Toronto, get with it. Like, this is unacceptable. So, Sydney, you impressed me. I love your metro system. It is so good. Sydney, in general, though, kind of felt like coming home. Like, it feels very similar to Toronto, which was, was kind of nice. I mean, we'd had a good time in Bali, but whenever you travel and you don't understand the language, you're always operating on like a higher level because you're always trying to process what's happening and the culture is always a bit of a shock because you're you're not used to whatever it is so to go into Australia and um, just suddenly feel like you were back home again was an interesting way to do the trip because we had our week in like an island paradise and then we are a little bit tired by the time we're done with that but we still have like a week and a half left of vacation so to go to Australia after that and just be eased into the culture was an interesting way to do it and I think it worked out really well for us. So we were in Sydney for a few days. I ran a half marathon there. I ran the Black Moors Sydney Running Festival Half Marathon, which if you know me, I you know that I love running on vacation. I love running races because you see totally different vistas of the city that you would never have seen just by being a tourist. So the start of that race was at 6 a.m. And I had to get up at 4 a.m. to eat because otherwise I can't digest properly. And it was cool. Like it was like six degrees at 6 a.m. And it was glorious. I was so happy because it's so much easier for me to breathe in the cool temperatures. And most people think of Australia as being quite warm, but it was in the middle of, well, the end of winter. So the temperatures were quite cool in the morning and I was so happy about that. That race started us off by uh, running over the Harbour Bridge. So you got to see like the rising sun and then just the setting all around. It was, it was a really interesting course too. Like it looped a lot around downtown Sydney and I liked it, but man, there were a lot of uphills, way more than I was expecting. But still, it, it was a good race. I, I enjoyed it. Well, the wings got a little out of control for me. They don't exactly match, but whatever. If I touch them up anymore, they're just gonna get worse. So we spent a few days in Sydney and then we flew up to, I wanna say Cairns because that's how it's spelled. However, I was constantly corrected to say Cairns, but I think that's how the locals say it with an Australian accent because I can't say Cairns without, you know, feeling foolish. So. We flew up to Cairns after a few days so that we could go see the Great Barrier Reef because I figured it was kind of pointless to go to Australia if you didn't see the Great Barrier Reef, especially given the fact that it's kind of like dying and they expect it's going to be gone in about 30 years. So flying up to Cairns gave me perspective on just how big this country is. It was a three hour flight and it's not like Sydney is the southernmost tip of Australia. <laughs> Um, so we flew up there and then we were going to go visit the reef the next day. So we took a boat out there and we were going to do some snorkeling because neither of us had scuba dived before and we didn't really want to discover how to scuba dive <laughs> while we were trying to take check out the reef. So we got our snorkel gear. Um, we were on a boat with plenty of other people and they had snorkel gear and scuba gear that we could um, rent and we dove in the waters and it's beautiful down there but you can really tell that the reef is dying so much of the coral is just gray now which is kind of sad and i hadn't really thought about it but i came back and my dad was like okay did you see any beautiful coral like tell me about that i'm like well i saw it but it was gray and i hadn't really stopped to consider the fact that coral used to be brightly colored and my dad was a little bit upset because he you know loves to travel and love seeing different things so he's sad to hear that the coral is dying but um yeah it really is and i don't know if that was just where we went on this boat or um if it's kind of everywhere now but um the fishies are doing fine there was plenty of colorful fish down there and i'm not really a fish person like i find them kind of creepy but this area that the boat was was a rather tame area for fish i guess you could say um, didn't see any sharks. I definitely didn't see any clownfish, like the Nemo fish. Um, even though they would said that if we could see them, we must be blind. But I, I tell you, I did not see a single one of those fish down there. But man, there were some beautiful ones. There were some aquamarine, teal, deep blue ones that were just jaw-droppingly pretty. They were gorgeous. When we were also up in Cairns, we checked out a place called Karanda. It's high up in the mountains. You had to take like an old-timey train to get up there and you take a sky lift back 
and we didn't have much time there because our flight was leaving around four o'clock. We were only two days in Cairns. Um, but we were man we managed to go up there, check it out. Um, <laughs> we got to go into a little petting area where there was kangaroos and wallabies, and I love wallabies now. They're the cutest thing ever. They're basically just small size kangaroos, and they're adorable. I love them so much. And I got to pet them, but they're not soft. It's kind of like coarse fur, but man, they are adorable. So to get to Karanda, you take a slow train up there, and it's... It's a bit treacherous actually. There's a lot of like very narrow rickety areas, but to get back down from it, you can take the train or you can take a sky rail. So we took the sky rail and it's basically just a ski lift that goes on forever. It was a little bit scary and I'm not somebody who's especially terrified by heights, but man, when you're hanging up there and then suddenly the lift like stops because they had to stop it somewhere for somebody who like couldn't get on properly or something like that, it's a, it's a little bit terrifying. Um, but man, the views up there are gorgeous because you basically come down on a steep descent and you can see like all of the ocean water of Cairns. <sighs> so pretty. So after we spent a few days in Cairns, literally just two nights, we flew back to Sydney and then just kind of like chilled and checked out different areas. Um, we went surfing at Bondi Beach. I'd never been surfing before. I was hoping that I'd be a natural at it, and I'm okay, I can get up on the board, but I, I'm definitely not a pro, even though I desperately wanted to be. Um, so that was fun, and then, ugh, this was so random, it turned out that one of my friends was actually in Sydney at the time that we were there, from Toronto, and I hadn't seen him in probably two years, just because we've had like misconnections all the time, and we kind of, we didn't play the same sport anymore, I used to play Ultimate Frisbee, and so did he. And I discovered that he was in Sydney just on vacation randomly and I was like, hey, you want to go for dinner? And it was, it was wild. It was great. We got to go out to this beautiful place and hang out with a friend that you haven't talked to in a while, but you know, you see on the other side of the globe. It was, it was a really nice moment. It was kind of like a taste of home while you're on vacation and of course catching up with him was great because I haven't seen him in forever. Oh, the place we went to for food, by the way, that um, with Adam, that was the friend from Toronto that I saw in Sydney, was called The Potting Shed. It's a little bit um, south of Sydney's downtown core, but it's worth going to. This place is beautiful. It's all like outdoorsy. Um, there's like fairy lights everywhere and the food was fantastic. Highly recommend. It's a little bit outside of the core, but it's well worth going out there. Just popping on some mascara and then I'm gonna throw in some false lashes. Um, this is the Tarte Tardis Lash Paint. I freaking love this mascara. I think this one's on the end though of its uh, usability because it's not as wet as it used to be. It's not a super wet formula but I do like my mascaras to be a little bit wetter in general. So of course now that we're back from vacation we're already talking like where do we want to go next? I have extreme wanderlust. I have to leave North America once a year or I go stir crazy. And going to the US doesn't count. Like I have to leave North America. <laughs> Whew, those are some big lashes. Uh, these are the Velour Mink Lashes. They are, what? Doll me up. And now on to my least favorite part of my makeup routine, my eyebrows. Man, I don't know how people do them so nicely. Everyone seems to get like perfect arches and a lovely tail and mine always just look like blobs. I know I complain about it every time too so I'm sure you're tired of hearing about it but I hate doing them. It's like I've got no patience when it comes down to this. Maybe because it's just not fun. I'm not like putting color on my face. I'm literally just filling in something that should have existed in the first place. Actually, I think I feel like that about makeup in general. Unless I'm putting color on my face, it's boring. Like, I like eyeshadow, blush, highlighter, bronzer, but like, foundation and eyebrows? Ugh, so boring. All right, eyebrows are on. I'm gonna leave it here without putting any lipstick on, which I know will infuriate some people, but I'm about to go do a try-on video of uh, the Kat Von D Mini Everlasting Liquid Lipstick Set that just came out for holiday 2017, and I'm so excited to try it on, so I figured there's no point putting anything on my lips because I'm literally just gonna remove it. I'm just gonna end it here, so thank you for listening to me ramble on as I got ready for my next few videos that I'm about to go film. I'll catch you next time. Bye.